What's up GQ, this is Trax, and today we're gonna be breaking down the biggest pieces in Migos jewelry collection. First and foremost, Migos, not only did they spend millions of dollars on jewelry, but they also brought millions upon, probably hundreds of millions of dollars into the jewelry business. So the biggest trends that these guys brought uh, into the game that really made a difference is they brought monster-sized custom pieces back to the forefront. They made jewelers, they broke jewelers, they made the scene, and uh, you know they changed the game. So the first thing I see with these guys is that they're loaded up with Cubans, more Cubans than a lot of jewelers have in their shop. Some of these Cubans are ranging from 50,000 to 100,000. They got the baguette ones, they got the two row, they got the three row, they got the rose gold, they got the white gold. They got them on the wrist, they got them with the diamond lock, they got them with the basic lock. Every time in every city they hit, it looks like they buy a Cuban. So Quavo, obviously he's proud of that baguette grill that he's got. He's got diamond glasses on, he's got big pointers in his ears, but he's pointing at his grill. That's what he loves. The new trend in the diamond uh, industry is these beautiful new baguette cut diamonds, right? There's the old style baguette cut diamonds that they were using before, and then there's the new style. And the thing about baguette cuts, they're kind of like emerald cuts, except they are pure rectangles. They don't have cut corners. That means that you could stack them like bricks. That means that you could stack them in a grill and have a beautiful facade. And what's the point of jewelry, right? It's to have something other people don't have. Everybody spent all their money on a pave flower set grill. Guess what, they ran out of money, but you didn't. Neither did uh, Quavo, and he got himself a baguette grill, and when everybody gets uh, one of those, he's probably gonna get something different. So when you're wearing uh, millions of dollars of jewelry and you have a cast, you gotta ice it out. He definitely got it matching for whatever event he's going to. And uh, you know, I think he did a pretty good job because when you look at this image, the first thing you do is you look at the cast. You don't even look at the millions of dollars of jewelry and the cast probably cost 20,000 bucks or so. So the first thing my eye kind of gravitates towards after the Cubans is the Crash Bandicoot pendant. They got this a while ago, right? This was kind of in their earlier days. And it's more of a cartoony piece, all the video games that these guys played when they were young. And then you grow up and you've got millions of dollars and you get a monster iced out piece. This piece right here came from, inspired by the Crash Bandicoot game, the Aku Boudicca mask. And I'm a 90s baby, so I do a lot of 90s. So on the Crash Bandicoot pendant, you got yellows, you got blues, you got greens, you got different color stones in there. And how does that affect the price? Well, it could uh, diminish the price if uh, the quality of the stones is cheaper, right? Sometimes jewelers want to take a shortcut. Well, you could take a brown diamond, radiate it, and it might turn uh, blue or green, and it'll be dark, but because it's already changed the color, it doesn't matter. So you're taking cheaper diamonds and converting them into colors, but not for Quavo, okay? He has uh, bright colors there. The jeweler that made that piece did not cut corners. It definitely didn't diminish the value uh, that is in that piece. The classiest setup over here to me is with Offset. He plays loud on his neck with a monstrous amount of Cubans, and then he's got big pointers, two of them on there. It's loud, but it's not too loud, right? Aside from the pointers, what's the most expensive piece you see? Well, it's the one that has absolutely no diamonds. It's the Skeleton AP Frosted White Gold. What is a Frosted AP? Audemars, they basically hammer white gold into a certain type of finish that looks like it's frozen outside. That watch is a collectible watch. No two frosted APs are the same. It's all done by hand. Right now, $150,000 to $200,000 for that timepiece. So the first thing in this image that my eyes pay attention to is the Ric Flair piece that Offset is wearing, right? It was in the video, it's the iconic image of Ric Flair in his uh, heyday, prime time, right? And then under that, right next to it is the cross with pink diamonds in the center. Offset's rings are a collection of rings that he saw out of the corner of his eye and bought and uh, pulled out of his uh, jewelry collection and put on that day. That's what it looks like to me. Some of them might be even free gifts from the jewelers that they get when they spend a million dollars, I don't know. Quavo, on the other hand, he is uh, doing something quite different. He's got all of his crazy diamond rings on. I got it from like the old, like old dope boys from the 80s who had a like the one ring hold for, for hand, but I wanted to move all my fingers. So 
That's why I got it like individually. He's got massive amounts of Cubans and his wrist is Cubaned out as well. These guys have a jewelry store right there uh, in, in this image as they usually do. So takeoff is taking off like Elon Musk in this one, right? He's got the solar system, he's got the planets, he's got the shuttle and the astronaut there. That's that's a dope piece, and when that hit the internet, it, it really it really made a statement. That setup right there to get done with all those carrots, all that ice, at least a half a million bucks to make that happen, right? Uh, all the custom work, all the chains and the fully ice, so on and so forth. So when you're out there, guys, uh, rappers, artists, whoever. You want to look like Offset, you want to look like Takeoff, you want to look like Quavo. You have to make sure you have a million to two million dollars to spend just on jewelry to compete with these guys. And you have one record, you did this, you have a half a million dollars in the bank, that's not gonna cut it, guys. So Takeoff, you know, sometimes he's flying through the solar system, sometimes he's keeping it mellow. He's got a Cuban, and then he's got an Infinity Link that links into an eye. On a day like this, you know, you wake up and you say, I just want to wear a Cuban, but I don't want to just wear a Cuban. I want to have a little something. I want to have an eye, the mind's eye, uh, or whatever it might be, whatever it uh, uh, symbolizes to him, he's got it. I think it's a, it's a nice touch for somebody who wants to be a little more artistic than just have an iced out Cuban. When you're a superstar, you can't just have an iced out Cuban. It has to have something going on. This is the bando, it's the bando emoji. So here Offset is wearing the Trap House piece. These are the pieces that when they hit the internet, right, they went viral. The Trap House, it opens, there's someone shooting in the, from the back and so on and so forth. Now these pieces, as a jeweler, are not the hardest thing in the world to make. It's more or less a diamond gingerbread house. But on the other hand, the effect that it had when you're spending $250,000 to $500,000 on, you know, along with the chain or what have you, on, a, on a, a custom piece that no one's ever seen in those materials, and then it hits the internet, and then the next rapper, that's really what happened, has to compete. It's really an investment in their image, and it works. Don't think that these guys are fools spending millions of dollars on jewelry. So here Offset is uh, got a really a, another important piece for the jewelry industry, the picture piece. And these are great pieces. So the trend with picture pendants started over the course of two to three years ago, right? I don't quite remember exactly uh, which rapper started it. I know that Meek Mill uh, really made a scene on that. But this particular picture pendant really I like. Big pointers, no games, no jokes, keep it simple. Big diamonds, VS, you know, what else can you ask for? So when it comes to picture pendants, there's two ways of doing it, that depending on how much time you have, right? You could laser print the image right onto the gold uh, uh, surface and then put a clear coat on top. That's a great way of doing it. Or you can kind of glue a picture in there that already has a clear coat on it. That's kind of a faster or a cheaper way of doing it. It could be done overnight. Which way is the better one? Obviously lasering it onto the gold, that's what it seems to be over here, is the better way of doing it. You think this guy's gonna have uh, the worse way or the better way? Of course he's gonna have the better way of doing it. So every time Quavo has the baguette grill, he has to point to it. What else does he have on? Well, he's got a big rock in his ear, I'll tell you that much, and that is uh, quite expensive, because that looks like between three to four carats, and I know he's not wearing any SIs or anything like that, and when you're looking at those numbers, you're a $100,000, $200,000 range. You have a monster pointer chain right over the Cuban that's holding the uh, that way piece. You're looking at at least a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars on that one. And then above that is a chain that looks something like this. Okay, so this is a baguette chain. And what's the price of this chain? Well, I charge thirty-two thousand dollars for this chain. Now, when it comes to that one, he might have paid more, and it might be a more valuable chain because I can't exactly see how the baguettes are set up but you get what you pay for, and these are, uh, you know, trendy chains. The pinky ring, on the other hand, is a beautiful piece, right? That is uh, big baguettes going down the center and round stones all around. That is a beautiful pinky ring. The price range should be around twenty dollars to $30,000 on a piece like that. So this is the classic superstar setup that's in this image right here. So the most expensive pendant out of this collection is the QC, but the most iconic is the that way. Because you're taking something like Subway, which is a $5 sandwich, and you're changing it into that way, and you're spending hundreds and thousands of dollars on it. 
that's really where that fire comes from, right? You're taking, uh, you know, a cartoon character that you used to watch as a kid on cable for free. You grow up, you spend $200,000 on it. He used to, I don't know, work at Subway or eat at Subway, whatever it might be, but he wanted to say that way. And, and, and it works and it hits and everybody knows that. So that's really the piece. So this is a really dope setup in and of itself. Why? Because the three pieces, and there might be a fourth hidden somewhere, I'm not sure, but the three pieces are layered one on top of each other. At the bottom, you got the Crash Bandicoot, which is the classic, he still loves it. Likely he wore it that day because he wanted to have this monster-sized ice cream cone around his neck, right? And then on top of that, you have the Schmurder Schmigo Gang. Fully iced, round stones, this is not baguettes, this is not, you know, the baguette stuff will take sometimes a month to make or so on and so forth. These guys were moving around, he said, I need this piece fast, get it done fast. Got the 3D model, had it iced out, got it around his neck, uh, monstrous amounts of carrots, 1000% Migo on top of that. What is he saying? You decipher it for yourself. I think I hear what he's saying to me, right? He's a thousand percent Schmurder, Migo, Gang, Crash Bandicoot, Diamonds, Cubans, Pointers, Millions. So the chain setup over here is really ridiculous, okay? It's really something to be, you know, sadly jealous of. I mean, it's a lot of chains. And the two monster size pointers in two tones, right? You got two different colors of gold there, big rocks, 50 pointers. You're looking at uh, 200,000, 300,000 for the setup there on just those two chains. And then you got monster Cubans behind it, one bigger than the next. This is the best of the best. Takeoff is wearing the Jesus piece on a monster pointer chain. Now, the Jesus piece is not what these guys started out wearing. They were making these customs, they were doing all these crazy stuff, but this, he brought it back to the classic, to the Biggie Smalls, the Tupac era, right? Uh, the, the iced out Cuban Jesus pieces with H classes, blind your broke asses, like Biggie used to say. In this particular instance, that classic Jesus piece got big rocks in the, in the crown, right? And it's got big rocks around the neck. I really like that piece. I would love to make it for my shop. Um, and to me, it, it, it really does look beautiful. It has that depth of the, of the Jesus face that uh, I love. So this piece, right, with Quavo right here is uh, one of my favorites, personally. It's got the 3D models of the Migo gang. And of course it has the iconic, beautiful uh, baguette cut stones that are on the background. I mean, this is a, a you know, a, a beautiful piece. He doesn't stop this guy. Why would he stop? He set the trends in the jewelry game and he's setting them again. His pieces are wearing other pieces on them, right? These guys are wearing chains. And the beautiful touch on this pendant right here is, again, the fully iced sunglasses on one. The lenses are iced. The grill is iced on that one. And they, these other guys don't have the grill. He took an image of them and, and brought it to life with all the details. And the fully iced glasses is another trend I attribute to them. I don't know who really started it, but I'd, I'd probably say it was them. Because they are on top of it. They might pull out their, their keys to their uh, uh, garage door. And that might have ice on it too. I don't know. They don't, they're not stopping on anywhere with the ice. So the three of them are not enameled. You could enamel that, you could hand paint that, you could do all of that. And they were probably even thinking of doing all that, but they left it raw gold because he saw it and he's like, leave it that way. That's what I'm imagining in my head. How do I know? It's satin finish. You need to satin finish it so the paint would stick to the gold. And it looked like he showed it to him and he said, it's ready for enamel. Leave it just like that, I want it just like that, I want it now, I want it tomorrow. I'm picking it up or you're flying it in, whatever it is. So this chain, again, I mean, I could almost hear Quavo on the phone speaking to Eliante or whoever and telling him that he wants something that's gonna, uh, you know, pull out all the stops. It's an infinity link. It's a new type of link. You know, you, you can't just pop up in the morning and come up with a link, right? It takes a little time, a little thinking. How are you gonna execute that? These links are held together by other links that are made with baguettes going all the way around. You wanna set that correct. You don't want the stones falling out. This was a special project for him. He wasn't playing around with this one and he did it again. As a jeweler, as a fan, I can't take my eyes off the picture. I doubt that I would be able to take my eyes off the actual piece. Another piece that really makes me turn green, right? Like Yoda sitting on top of him. So let's say you're a rapper, an artist, or just some dreamer, and you wanna look 
like these guys. What is it gonna take? Well, it's gonna take some more artistic sense, right? Let's leave the dollars aside for a second. Pieces like that way, the trap house, the solar system. You gotta come up with that, you can't copy that. A lot of people try to copy that, they don't hit the mark. But you know, let's say you're a creative guy, you've got all these ideas and you love them, so on and so forth. Better get your money up. How much money do you have to have to spend $10 million on jewelry? At least 50 million. After that, when you're spending that type of money on jewelry, you gotta have the right jewelers. These guys had business relationships with some jewelers, they weren't happy, they cut them off. There's a lot of people out there, they go to Icebox, Eliante, maybe they'll go to Pristine, maybe they won't. But I'm personally gonna say thank you to them because they brought attention to the industry, they gave a lot of business in the game, and they set a standard by uh, you know, uh, putting their foot down and, and, and doing what they wanna do and, and not what someone else is thinking.